Here at Simply Garden, with over 50 years of gardening experience, I believe in keeping things simple and productive while gardening in your own backyard. Good afternoon, it's a beautiful uh, summer day here. We're talking around uh, June uh, 26th, Southern New Hampshire, Zone 5, and uh, we're going to be planting some carrot seeds today. So we're going to work on squeezing some in somewhere. This time here, uh, real estate in the garden gets pretty, uh, should I say, pretty much in demand. So I do find ways of interplanting, squeezing things in. They always, of course, thinking ahead what's going to affect down the road as far as how that plant's going to do when other things start filling in. Um, but before I get to that, I'd like to spend a few uh, moments to uh, do some uh, shout outs for a couple of people who are doing a great job in their, uh, their efforts uh, as far as their gardens. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, Farmall Fanatic. Uh, yes, he does like uh, uh, farm tractors, but he's also uh, doing a great job in, in putting his garden together and, and just uh, some good education and as far as uh, teaching and learning from what he does. And also uh, Bruce City Gardener, nice operation there that they're doing out there consistently. Another one would be uh, Paul Paul's, Paul Paul's Hobby Homestead. Uh, make sure you give a shout out to them and go check them out and if you like what you see make sure you subscribe with all of these i'm mentioning and then uh, uh nichols retirement empire uh, he's uh, doing multiple different things but one of those things is gardening and some of the other things he's doing since he's retired and just kind of doing a focus on what he does out there and it's a lot of fun and uh he has some great uh stories to tell and some good events that he's doing so you think you enjoy uh, checking his uh, some of his channels out also so we'll go ahead and list this on the bottom so you can uh, con connect to them easily and find them in case I didn't pronounce some of those right but the, once again it's a uh, farm off fanatic Bruce City Gardener Paul Paul's Hobby Homestead and Nichols Retirement Empire and uh, check them out and uh, meanwhile we're gonna get to uh, put in some carrot seeds here I'm going to have to prepare this area here a little bit. I do like to loosen the soil up. Uh, but first, the, uh, we're going to do a couple carrot seeds. Some are by Burpee. Uh, Nana Supreme, they do pretty well for this time of year when it gets a little drier out summertime. Um, we're also going to do another one by Gurney's, which is called uh, Tender Sweet. It's a nice uh, carrot that goes down pretty deeply, but uh, it's easy to pull out. Uh, I've had no problems growing that. And then I also like to interplant with radishes. Uh, some... Uh, uh, burpees radish cherry bell these happen to be organic seeds and uh, we'll be putting those in between the seeds of the carrots so with that said I'm going to start off by first uh, loosening the soil up a little bit doesn't need to be loosened up too much because I've already you know loosened up earlier when I, when I did this uh, prepared for the for the spring it's all been composted and carrots are those kind of things when you, once you get the seeds going um, they're pretty easy to take care of just make sure you have plenty of moisture, and that's where I use the uh, the burlap, which I'll get in a little bit there. And um, just like to kind of like to kind of make sure the dirt is healed up a little bit, so that way it has a good chance to uh, not be compacted. So the carrot roots don't get compacted in there, because they're, if they're compacted, they're going to fork off on you and not grow quite as well. So here we go. And I'll do, I basically do two rows close together to each other, about six, eight inches apart. Because I'm not walking on these, so you can go a little further apart because I use the raised beds uh, method. My caught loosely raised bed method. Uh, but it's been doing this way for 35 years. And this thing ain't broke, don't fix it, right? All right, so we'll go ahead and rake that smooth. And I'll get a couple of my, my planter boards that I like to use. Simply just some simple uh, one by four pine boards. And run that down a couple of times to make a little, a little furrow. And then we'll set the carrot seeds in there. So let me get that and then you also need to get the burlap. And uh, we'll, we'll get back right to it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put a little fertilizer in there first. Just gonna sprinkle a small amount on top since it's getting a little later in the season and we've had a lot of rain lately. 
give it a little head start. I'll just rake that in. Just an, pretty nice an organic fertilizer. Um, it's nothing that's pretty easy to find. Uh, Epsoma makes good organic fertilizer. I've used that in the past. This happens to be a local fertilizer that, they, that comes out of a state of Vermont. Um, I can get the, uh, the name in a second here. And we'll be putting the burlap down so I just want to get a rough idea how long this is going to be. This burlap's almost done, but hey, it's still got some life left to it. So we'll go about from down there to, to about wrap it up about down to here. There we go, okay. So we'll squeeze in a couple rows here. And just go back and forth a few times with the planter board. Take out a few rocks. Okay. And enough so it's not too close to tomatoes. Because they will eventually uh, fill in there pretty well. But I got enough space between the tomatoes. Almost uh, two and a half, th 30 inches between them. So there's plenty of space. The tomatoes to fill out. I'll just push them that way more so. And now we're about to let us down the end there because that'll just get pulled out pretty soon and used. We'll be getting some hot weather here in a couple of days, so fortunately it's going to take the lettuce and move it pretty quick. But I've got more coming over there. Just planted those. And once this hot spells come through, I'll go ahead and put another uh, seed, uh, set of lettuce seeds in with the wire hoops and with some kind of a burlap over top to give it some shade so that way the lettuce seeds will germinate. So lettuce seeds hate heat. They will not germinate in heat. So you need to give them shade. So we're gonna go ahead and just start sprinkling the carrot seeds in here. Um, I'm not too fussy with it. I kind of tend to probably go close to what they recommend but you know carrots are a tough thing that sometimes if you don't get the moisture just right to get them to germinate fully so I put them a little closer was probably required with the intention of yeah probably gonna have to go ahead and thin them out but a few minutes on uh, hands and knees isn't gonna kill you to thin these guys out because I've spaced them out the inch whatever and then you thin them to two inches but and I'm having a lot of misses and I'm wasting space so and the air problem is bugs will always tend to get them too. So I, I do some do some powders to try to keep that under control. But still, you got to put enough in so you can get something back. So there we go. I'm going to do the roll of the other ones. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm always good conscientious about that. So here we go. And then we get the tender sweets in the front. So you can just kind of run them in here. And I'm going to show you something. i got to do a little research on these things here, but I'm not exactly sure what oops, these bugs are. But they roll into little balls. You can see them there. There we go. They just opened up. Some, I think some people call them pill bugs, but I guess maybe that's the culprit that's eating my carrots when they come up all the time. 
I know there's different parts of the garden. Have them, some don't, so I can do a little research and see what these guys like to eat. I always thought they're good for, you know, grinding up and eating whatever's left in the garden that hasn't been you know, decomposed yet. But uh, these little guys are the ones that are eating my uh, carrots because something does eat these carrots and they just come up, they just mow it right down. So I'm wondering if this is in the culprit. Maybe some of you might know what these are. Um, I haven't looked online to see what they are, but I've had them for years. But I'm seeing more of them recently. I wonder if that's my problem with my carrots. So anyways, we'll deal with that on another issue. Just squished it. <laughs> um, now we'll throw some rashes in between. I like to do that because it kind of it marks marks the row. Gives a little more um, use of the space too. And as it starts coming up, then I go ahead and just, uh, as the rashes start maturing, then there's the space for the carrots I left uh, there behind to, to fill in the space. So the rashes don't take up too much space as they glope up from the bottom. And then I just, if I plant too thick, close together, I'll thin them out and thin them as I use them. And it also helps mark the row so you know exactly where your uh, carrots are at. All right, takes care of that, and then we'll um, basically call for putting these about a half inch of soil. So I try to go easy on that, not, not too deep, so that we can uh, they don't get smothered. They come up without any complications. If I put your seeds too deep, they're not going to not going to come up and germinate for you. We can turn half an inch to quarter is fine. All right. Then we'll go ahead and um, throw it on a burlap. Let's see, it's coming kind of coming down to the end here, but um, we'll still squeeze a few more uses of it. I do the plenty more but I'm cheap. It still works, I'll keep using it. watering and even with the burlap on you still got to keep it watered so you need to check it daily but this is what does you know in the hot heat <laughs> without the burlap on her and you can use boards wooden boards like one by four like the, the planter board I have there you could put a couple of those down um, that'll probably hold the moisture in better but I like using the burlap because it does leave a little sunlight in as they start to grow uh, but you got to check on them you get 100 degree heat <clears throat> You probably got one day that burlap will dry out and the heat will start drying up a little bit. I never had a problem with carrots don't mind heat um, to germinate. But I think also burlap might give it a little shade too. If you're concerned about too much heat, you can always throw a two by four in between. Um, and just kind of prop this up a little bit like that. that will give it a little shade that way. We're getting 100 degree heat coming up here pretty soon. I might do that just that way it holds the, the burlap away from the uh, the furrows where the seeds are. Maybe helps give it a little, a little shade underneath there. So I might do that just because the, I've never tried germinate carrot seeds when it's going to be almost upper middle upper 90s. So we'll see how that goes and uh, we'll report back on that when we do a garden update. 
on this area in a couple of weeks.